guys, so today we're going to look at Chapter 5. Um, chapter 5 is working with um, income statement, statement of owner's equity, um, trial, uh, sorry, not trial balances, uh, balance sheets. And these uh, statements are set up a little bit different than the last ones that we did. These are going to be multi-tier statements. Um, they're going to be a little bit more complex. So just please make sure you're following along with the videos while you're working on your assignments um, and the examples in your textbook. So the first one we're going to look at is 5-2. We're preparing an income statement. Use the following adjusted trial balance to prepare the income statement for the first month of operations of crime investigators as of October 31st, 2015. An Excel template is in your Canvas classroom. So just like we begin every um, statement that we're creating, we need our three-line heading. So we're going to start with the company name, crime investigators. And then the date. When we do the date for an income statement, it's going to say for the month ended because this is going to be um, kind of a, an a over a, a time frame type of a statement. Um, in some cases, it's going to be for the year ended. It just depends on when it is you're creating this statement. Okay, we're creating ours as of October 31, 2015. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to list our revenue. And if we look at our adjusted trial balance, it says we do have one revenue item listed um, and it says service revenue. OK, so I am going to list revenue. Okay, kind of as a heading, so I'm going to put a colon there. Now, in some cases, in some businesses, we may have more than one type of revenue, and that is where this is going to come into play. Um, I'm going to indent the word service revenue and because I only have one, um, actually, I'm going to list this one in the left-hand column. When we're looking at these columns, these columns have nothing to do with debits and credits. Um, these have everything to do with doing the math itself. Okay. I'm then going to list the words total revenue. I'm going to add up my total revenue. In this case, I only have one. Okay. So I'm going to put it there. I'm also going to stick a thick bottom border to show that I did some math, even though I, I didn't do math because we only had one. Um, we're still going to stick that, that bottom border on there. Okay. The next section is going to be expenses. Oops. And that should be out on the left hand side. So you might have to unindent that one. I'm going to put a colon at the end of that. And then I'm going to go through and I'm going to list all of my expenses. Okay. And again, I'm just taking these numbers off of my trial balance over here on the right and putting them into my statement on the left. All of my numbers um, for my expenses are going to be lined up on the left column because I'm going to add them and put the total on the right column. And you can see these um, account titles are indented. That one's indented too far, so I'm going to go back and fix that one. I'm just unindent it using my a decrease indent button. Okay. Once I have all of them listed, I'm going to type in the word total expenses. And again, that one should not be indented either. So I'm going to unindent that one. I'm going to come over here to my right hand column and I'm going to add up all of my expenses. Now you can grab a calculator and add them up, excuse me, that way and then type the number in. I'm going to use Excel sum feature equals sum opening parenthesis and I'm just going to click and drag over those numbers and press enter and it adds them up for me. Okay. The last thing I'm going to list is my net income. And that should be on the left hand column. My net income, I'm going to calculate by taking my revenue minus my expenses. So again, I'm going to use Excel to do the math. I'm going to type in the equal sign. Click on the 8,500, which is my total revenue, subtract my total expenses, and press enter. Okay, and I get a number. I don't know if this is right or not. I do know that I did math here, so I need a thick bottom border. And I do know that I did math here, so I need a thick bottom border. Okay, please don't forget those lines to show where it is that you did math on your statement. I'm going to leave this one alone for right now because I am not sure if that number is right yet. I'll, I'll know when I do my balance sheet. I'm going to scroll down my worksheets here and I'm going to flip to the next problem. 
Problem number three says prepare a statement of owner's equity. Use the adjusted trial balance in KCB 5-2 to prepare a statement of owner's equity for the first month of operations of crime investigators. So I'm going to pop back over here because I'm still using the same numbers. Again, three line headings. So I need the name of the company at the top uh, for the month ended October 31, 2015. Okay. So I'm going to start with my beginning capital. Got their name, Melina Giles Capital. Okay, and she started with zero, so we're just going to type a zero in there. Oh, I'm not sure why that's bold. Turn that off. And then I'm going to add two things. The first thing I'm going to do is add in the net income. Okay. The net income I'm going to get from up here, which was 4160. So I'm going to, you can type in the 4160. I'm going to type in equals and then click that number and press enter. And they'll bring the number down for me. I'm also going to add in any investments that she made. And that number comes from my adjusted trial balance over here on the right. It says Melina Giles Capital 32190. So that's where I'm going to get that number from. I'm also going to indent the word investments so it's under the word net income. There we go. I'm going to add those two numbers together. Again, I'm using Excel to do the math. And I need a thick bottom border under that one to show that I did math there. I am then going to subtract Melina Giles' drawing. I get that number from my trial balance over here. Drawing was 1100 When I subtract them, it's going to give me my increase in owner's equity. Obviously, if it's a decrease, you would write decrease in owner's equity. Thick bottom border. I'm going to put the answer over here on the right. So I'm going to say 36,350 minus 1,100. And I get 35,320. And I, this is going to help me find my ending Molina Giles capital. I'm going to take the beginning capital plus the increase in owner's equity. Obviously, if that was a decrease, I would subtract that. My thick border there to show that I did more math, okay? Again, I still don't know if this is right. I have no way of checking it yet, so I'm gonna leave that number just the way it is. Moving on to 5-4, prepare a balance sheet. Uh, use the adjusted trial balance in 5-2 to create the balance sheet. Okay, so that's where I'm headed next. So I'm gonna come down here on my Excel spreadsheet and go to 5-4 balance sheet and then come back over here. So again, name of the company. A balance sheet is a snapshot in time. So we're just going to put in the, the date. We're not gonna put for the month ended. Now our balance sheet, we're going to split this up into different sections. Okay, in the first section we're going to list are our assets. Assets are anything we own. Okay, so I'm going to start at the top because that's where our assets are listed uh, with accounts cash and accounts receivable. Supplies. Again, I'm just pulling these numbers from the problem that's on the right side of my screen. Okay. apparently is centered, not what I want. So I'm going to pop that back to the left. Now, there's a couple different ways we can do accumulated depreciation. Um, your textbook is having you do it this way, so I'm going to show you this. Um, when you have accumulated depreciation on something, this is going to be subtracted from your assets. This is what's called a contra asset. Um, so I'm going to put that in parentheses to show that it's a subtraction. Okay. And then I have my total assets. I'm also going to take all of these assets and I'm going to indent them. Okay. Your textbook in this case wants you to left align the word assets and put a colon at the end. Okay. I'm going to put the answer to my total assets over here on the right. And again, I'm going to use the sum feature and have Excel do it for me equals sum parenthesis and click and drag. I'm going to put a thick bottom border under that cell to show that I added something there. Okay, so right now it says I have a total assets of 41850 
we know from our accounting equation that assets equals our liabilities plus owner's equity, okay? Right now, we don't know if they're equal yet, so we're gonna leave that number alone and we're gonna move on to the liabilities part of this. Again, your textbook wants this to be left aligned. I usually center it. Um, I'm gonna left align it here so that everything is consistent with what you're seeing. I'm gonna list my liabilities. Liabilities are anything that people owe, I'm sorry, any money that I owe to other people. So accounts payable, salaries payable, usually that word payable is your red flag that that is a liability, okay? Looks like I only have two listed, so I'm gonna have total liabilities. Again, I'm going to indent these two account titles. Use the whoops, Excel sum feature to add those numbers up and a thick bottom border. Okay. The next section is owner's equity. And I have Melina Giles Capital. Now, this is where some people get a little lost. You're not going to pull the capital number from this adjusted trial balance. We're going to go back to your owner's equity, your statement of owner's equity. Oh, I didn't realize that said stockholder's equity. So we're going to change that. Um, you're going to come back to your statement of owner's equity to where it says ending Melina Giles Capital 35,250. And that's what we're going to put here 35,250. Okay. I'm going to indent that to show it's part of owner's equity. And I have total liabilities and owner's equity. And this is going to equal the 6,600 plus the 35,250. Now, bottom double border, I'm sorry, thick bottom border. If this number equals this number, chances are we got it right, okay? That doesn't mean there isn't a mistake anywhere, but that means that it's balanced, and as far as we're concerned, it is correct, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and put a double bottom border on these cells to show that they are in balance. I'm going to go back to my statement of owner's equity and put a double bottom border on the total on the statement of owner's equity, and on the income statement to show that everything balanced as of the balance sheet, okay? So as of right now, everything is in balance. I'm also gonna come through here and assets is gonna be bold, liabilities should be bold, and owner's equity should be bold, just to show where those headings are, okay? Okay, the next problem. 5-5, -5, complete the closing entry process. Use the adjusted trial balance to prepare the closing entries for the first month, then complete the post-closing trial balance. Okay, so we're going to go over here to 5-5, -5, and we're going to complete some closing entries. Now, we know that there are certain accounts that are temporary and that restart at the beginning of every fiscal year, okay? Those accounts include your revenue accounts, your expense accounts, and your drawing accounts. So we're going to take a few minutes and we're going to close those accounts. So our date in our journal is going to be October, oops, month or year first, 2015. Alt-Enter gets you that second line there, October 31. And the first account that um, we're going to be closing is our revenue account, okay? Our revenue account has a credit balance, so we need to debit it to close it. Service revenue has a balance of $8,500. The next thing we're going to close is our expenses. They have a debit balance, so we're going to credit them to close them. Now, the closing entries that I'm doing um, are a little bit different than they are listed in your textbook because your textbook is a slight bit outdated. So I'm showing you how to do them the correct way. Um, so please be, make sure that you're following along with me and not your textbook in this situation. Okay. Again, I'm just pulling your um, expense information from the, whoops, from the list on the right-hand side. So since I credited these, we have to indent them. 
Now we know in the world of accounting, our debits and our credits always have to equal, okay? So right now, if I were to add up all of these um, credits, I see that they do not equal. 8,500 and 4,340 are obviously not equal, okay? So I'm gonna take these two numbers and I'm gonna subtract them. 8,500 minus 4,340 and I get 4,160, okay? I'm gonna take that 4,160, which ironically is the same as my net income. Everything is starting to add up. And I am going to send a credit to my capital okay, to show that that net income amount of 4,160 is being moved into my capital account. Okay. So that is our first closing entry. We're taking our service revenue and debiting it to close it, and then crediting our expense accounts to close them and moving our net income into our capital account. Our next account, I'm sorry, our next closing entry is going to be to close drawing. So again, I start with a date. Drawing has a debit balance, so we're going to credit it to close it. So I'm going to debit my capital account the amount that's in my drawing account. So I'm gonna come over here to drawing 1100. And then I'm going to credit my drawing account for 1100. Now I'm gonna uninvent this one because it shouldn't be indented. Again, I took the amount that's in drawing in the debit side and I credited it, credited, credited it to close it and then I debited capital, okay? And those are your two closing entries. So we've closed service revenue, we've closed our expense accounts, and we've closed our drawing account, and we've moved everything into our capital account, okay? If we look at our problem, it says, you will then complete a post-closing trial balance, okay? So what we're gonna do with our post-closing trial balance is we're going to take these balances which some have changed, and write them out over here with the changes in them. So first thing we're gonna start with is our three line heading, crime investigators. Post-closing trial balance is a snapshot in time. Oops. Okay, and I'm gonna start with cash. Nothing happened to cash in my process. Nothing happened with accounts receivable. So these I'm just listing. Supplies was fine. Equipment's good. Accumulated depreciation for equipment was fine. We didn't do anything with that one. Accounts payable we didn't change. Salary is payable, we didn't change. Whoops. And then Melina Giles Capital, we did change. So we're gonna have to look at that one. And then if we look at the rest of our accounts, drawing we closed, revenue we closed, expenses we closed. They're closed, they don't have balances, so we're not going to list them, okay? Now our capital account we have to look at. So our capital account started at 32,190. So I'm going to type that in, equals 32,190. If I look at my journal, actually, I'm not going to type that in because it's going to throw a fit. If I look at my journal, I did a credit for 4,160 and a debit for 1,100, okay? So I'm going to take that 32,190, add the 4,160 because a credit plus a credit, you add them together when they're the same, and subtract the 1,100 because that one was a debit. Okay, so I took the balance, which was a credit, added the, sorry, class changes, added the credit of 4160, subtracted the debit of 1100, and it gave me 35,250. So this number should equal, if I go back here, this one, 35,250. 35,250, so the world is right. Now, I need some totals. 
because it's a trial balance, right? We want it to balance. So I'm going to add up my debit column, put my mouse in the bottom right hand corner, click and drag it straight over. And I did something wrong. Oh, I missed a zero up here. Okay, what else did I do wrong? Oh, this one's supposed to be 400. I don't know where I got 490 from. Problem solve, problem solve. Look at that. I just taught you problem solving skills. Okay, sorry about that. So in all hopefulness, we want them to equal, okay? So you can see what it looks like when they don't equal and how we just have to go back and look at our numbers again because human error, which we talked about in one of our discussions. I'm going to click on these and put a thick, whoops, not that one. I need a thick bottom border. These are equal, so they get a double bottom border, bottom double border, okay, and all is well with the world. Um, so that was a longer problem. Um, there were a lot of different steps in it. Feel free to slow this video down. If you have any questions while you're working, please let me know, and have a great week.